Bonjour les amis, bienvenue dans un autre épisode de Efaningo. Uh, I'm just pronouncing it the way the Google Translate lady told me to. Have fun and go. Have fun and go. And go. So right now I'm in the Lorraine region, that's in the north of France, pretty close to a place called Verdun. I'm making my way down south, but before I do, I want to tell you something about a historical event that happened here in the region that made a very big impact. So if you're into movies like 1917, All Quiet on the Western Front or the Peter Jackson documentary They Shall Not Grow Old, this is going to be an interesting one. Now obviously I can't tell you everything and show you everything because, well, uh, I guess that would take days because this region is filled with monuments and sites you can visit. But still, here is a little history lesson 101. And also, the big question is, is this white shirt going to be just as white as it is right now, as at the end of the video? <laughs> Let's find out. Let's go on an adventure. While driving through this part of France, ignoring the indescribable events that happened here 100 years ago is unavoidable. No matter how small, almost every village in this region has a World War I monument. That's how significant the impact was of the Great War. So the total madness of the War of Verdun is that it lasted 302 days, which is the longest fight during World War I. But why was this part of France so crucial to the Germans? Besides being strategically significant and along the pathway to Paris, taking Verdun would boost German morale. Erich von Falkenhayn, a German general, believed that World War I would be won or lost in France and he insisted that Germany should bleed France to death by choosing a point of attack where he knew the French would sacrifice every man they had. Imagine this, you're a French soldier, you're lying in the trenches, you know that something is about to happen but you don't know when. And then it's February 21, 1916, it's a quarter past seven in the morning and uh, the Germans start Operation Judgment with a 10-hour non-stop artillery bombardment firing over a million shells. Yes, a million. So after the 10-hour uh, bombardment, the Germans stop for about 10 minutes. Now, if you're a French soldier and you've even survived the first wave, this is the perfect moment to get away. So most of the French soldiers do. They get out of their shelter and try to leave the battlefield and find another place to hide. And once they do, the Germans start bombing them again, hour after hour after hour. During the War of Verdun, the French suffered over 377,000 casualties and the Germans 337,000. Which is about 70,000 casualties every month. That is, it's insane. No, I'm not trying to find a wild camping spot. This area is actually uh, used by the French military. There are no camping signs everywhere, so I'm not going to do that. The reason I'm driving down this road is there's supposed to be a fort here somewhere, but I don't know. Ah, found it. There it is. So according to this uh, sign, there's a, uh, oh, hold on, this is just, uh, it's nothing. Luckily I have some Wikipedia info in my back pocket. So this is Fort Sauville, there it is. 
And uh, there is a funny story because for a very long time this fort had no name, just as a lot of other fortresses in France, because the French military thought that uh, fortresses were useless, so they abandoned most of them up until the First World War. They used it again as a uh, munition depot, and you can actually go inside, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, just gotta find the entrance, and uh, must be here somewhere. I guess where the uh, sign says uh, "Do not enter, danger." That's probably the entrance. And there it is. And uh, I think I have to get my uh, flashlight. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Let's discover. So my guess is that there's a big chance there are bats here. Nope. Ah, that's a uh, nice surprise. Wow. All right. Up. Ah. So let's see what's around the corner. Hmm. So, at the end, look, oh, there is a bat, thought so, I don't know if you can see it. So my guess is that these are very large munition chambers, there is another one on the other side, they are huge. For the Germans, Fort Souville became the main obstacle to a final assault on Verdun, as all the other fortresses nearby had already fallen. In June 1916, the French counted over 1500 artillery impacts every day. Although parts of the structure collapsed and life was awful, as food, water and fresh air were scarce, the French soldiers didn't surrender. Even during the final attack, the French stormed out of the fort and fought with grenades, machine guns, bayonets and fists. After three hours, the fighting ended and the fort was saved. During the war, the Germans never reached Verdun. It's actually, hold up, it's actually insane that you're allowed to go in there. But it was pretty cool. <laughs> As a result of the determination of the French army during the Battle of Verdun, the slogan They Shall Not Pass appeared on French war propaganda posters. The village Fleury des Vents d'Ouamont, I hope I pronounce it well, was pretty close to where the German attack started. And uh, as you can see, the village was completely destroyed. I think it's one of the uh, six villages that was totally erased and never rebuilt. They put up little signs to give an indication where everything was before it was destroyed. Not far from the village is the Douaumont Ossuary, a World War I memorial containing the bones of 130,000 unidentified French and German soldiers. Outside are over 16,000 graves of French soldiers. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there before everybody gets too depressed about the whole thing, but I hope you liked the history lesson. Um, I also have to stop because there are still a lot of kilometers left before I reach Langres, so it's time to continue the road trip. Road trip and favorite uh, okay. I quickly got the good old map to show you a little bit about my route. So right now I'm over there in uh, Verdun and I'm actually going to follow the uh, Maas or as the French say La, Me La, Me La Meuse and I'm gonna well kind of like follow the uh, little river all the way down to a place called where is it? Uh, La Oh, there it is, long. All 
All right, I had to stop the car for a second because look at this view. This is amazing. What? I've stopped the car for a second because I want to tell you something about the place I am in right now. I had no idea I would go through this little village, but currently I am in Domremy la Pucelle. And now you're like, yeah, so? <laughs> but Domremy la Pucelle, I think every French knows this place because they had to learn it at school, is the birthplace of Jean d'Arc, Joanne of Arc. It was originally only Domremy, but they renamed it Domremy la Pucelle after the nickname of Jean, Jean la Pucelle. Which translates to Joanne the Virgin. You can actually visit her old house. It's still here. And what I think is really awesome about, you know, places like these is that you, you're in the same town where Jean d'Arc was a long, long time ago. I think that's really cool. I want to tell you a little bit more about the whole thing, but there's a guy with a leaf blower, so here's a little bit of a voiceover. <laughs> Jeanne d'Arc is a national hero in France. She was born in 1412, a peasant girl who spent her days working on these farmlands right here. At the age of 13, she had a divine intervention. This was divine intervention. You know what divine intervention is? Under this divine guidance, she led the French army in a momentous victory at Orléans in 1429 that stopped an English attempt to conquer France during the Hundred Years' War. What a hero! Unfortunately, she was captured and sentenced for witchcraft, heresy and dressing like a man, and was burned at the stake at the age of 19. Well, that's not nice. Can we go now? Pretty glad I found this spot in the shade because the temperature is 33 degrees. I think it's doable, but my phone thinks differently because I had it over here the whole time, right over there for uh, navigation, but uh, it actually overheated. So now my phone, I kid you not, is in the fridge, <laughs> cooling down. <laughs> Got my little baguette and some jam. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, come on. My lunch whoop, is in my stomach. Um, my phone <laughs> has cooled down. <laughs> Um, and now I'm going to find a uh, campsite. So uh, what I'm going to do is drive for another hour and a half, maybe two, and then stop the car, check Google Maps, find a cool campsite, and uh, hopefully they have room left for uh, one guy and one defender. And otherwise I'm going to go wild camping again. You know, I'll see. Let's find out, I guess. Okay, I wanted to really cool okay I wanted to close the door all right so um, let's go <laughs>
I made it to the campsite in Langres. The, uh, the gate you saw me driving through just a few seconds ago is actually the original entrance of this fortress town. Anyhow, uh, while I was editing this video, I realized I promised you in the previous video that I would tell you why I'm so happy to be in France. Well, here's the reason. And uh, sorry for the very poor photo quality. Back in the days we used to take photos with an old potato. Ever since I was a little kid, I spent my summer vacations in France. My parents would drag me, my sister, oh, there she is, love you sis, and our dog to every corner of the country. First the French Riviera, then more inland. We would always go to a campsite close to a river where I spent hours playing in the water, trying to catch some fish or jump off rocks. You won't say, but this is a 15 meter drop. Once my sister was sick and tired of all the French baguettes, my parents let me bring my best friend. Looking back, I had some of the most amazing summers as a teen and I still feel at home in this kingdom of cheese and wine. So that's the reason I'm happy to be here and why I chose to travel through La France. And now you know. And this is also the end of uh, this video. So thank you for watching. Also thank you for your continuous support. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next week.